popular. Remarkable testimony, extraordinary testimony. I want to turn around and tell the seven people around by yourself. I say, I'm the next in line for a testimony. I congratulate myself because I'm the next in line. Praise the Lord. Sit down. And what do you mean by faith? Faith is dancing as, as you would dance if you have received the miracle. Now imagine that you have received a biggest miracle on your life. How will you dance? Now, faith says, dance it now until the thing comes. So dance the way you will dance. Rejoice the way you will rejoice before it comes. That is faith in action. Putting faith into what? Action. May God give you understanding to that mystery. In the name of Jesus. We are considering a very important topic that I believe that is changing our life. Part two of it. What expectation will do for you? What expectation will it do for you? You may need, that is the topic of my message. You may need the, to listen to part two of, part one of it. Get the tape or the DVD and listen to it. Now, in the role of expectation, faith plays an important part in making your expectation, your dream come to pass. What is a dream? A dream is what you want God to do for you. The dream is your expectation. What I am anticipating. What I desire. What I look onto. I want to become a medical doctor. I want my child to be a lawyer. I want my children to be educated. I am looking towards, I'm expecting that. I want to at least have the foresight of traveling to a country like Dubai to see what is happening there. I want to be a part of it. You see, you are dreaming. I want to be happily married. I want to be, I want to have my children. I want to see my children in my arms. You know, those are expectations. Those are dreams. I want to sing as a musician, I want to sing and bless people. I want to be the best keyboardist in town. So that if any program they are going to hold in town, they will be looking for me to come and play in that program. That is it. So they, you must demonstrate faith. Your faith in your expectation. Then how do you demonstrate your faith? That is the question. How do you demonstrate your faith? Faith is a word that is very difficult for people many people to understand because they think faith is belief they equate it together even though they are similar but they have some little ingredients that make it di differ from each other how do you demonstrate your faith in expectation one you must obey the word of god tell somebody obey god's word let the word of god be in your heart so strongly Meditate on this word. The Bible says, if you keep this word in your heart, you meditate on it daily, you will have good success. Now take note of those words. Meditating on God's word on a daily basis can actually give you success and prosperity. This is a mystery that you need to know. So your success, your prosperity, is the level of God's word that you meditate, you visualize, you imagine, you carry in your heart. That is success. That is prosperity. And that's what the Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 and verse 9. Just when you look at it later. It's, it's all about 
the word of God. So and you have to obey. If you know this thing, happy are ye if you do it. If you know these things, happy are ye. It's out of ignorance. Somebody will offend you in their house. Say, because the person offends me, I won't go to church. Oh, because someone offends you, you won't go to church. It's ignorance. You don't know. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you are carrying. It's out of ignorance. A man will say, and because the wife did one thing in the house and, and rejects the wife's food. I say, I won't eat the food. Who brought out the money? Hmm? You brought out money. It's your money she's using to cook. And after I finish cooking, you say you will not eat. Who is punishing who? He's not yet hungry. He's punishing himself. And he's depriving himself of enjoyment in his own expenses. He is letting, he's letting somebody enjoy why he gets hot and is paying for the hot. Hallelujah. Now, so you discover that obey to obey, to obey is better than sacrifice. Obey means you are constantly standing firm by the word of God. You take the word of God as value. You value God's word. You honor God's word. You respect God's word. And you take it to be the absolute authority. You, know, you, know, you, see, you see, time has come that we don't need to force you to obey God's word. You just, it should flow out of your heart. It should be out of your being, out of your person. You just love God and you want to follow God. You want to serve God. You want to live holy. You want to live holy. And you shun anything that is, and anything that is bad. If you mistakenly do something that is wrong, you don't need anybody to tell you to apologize. Do you know if your child did something wrong in the house and you came out from office and the child came, oh, Daddy, I'm sorry, I, I was trying to clean this thing and it didn't break. What do you do? You, 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 you just take it gently. Am I right? But if the child did the thing and hid it and sweep it and cover it, I did not say anything. And everything was alright. And you came to discover. What happened? You called the child. Why do you do such thing? But the one who came by himself and said to the father, even when you have not been told, he's already telling you what he did. Confessing the mistakes he did. You, you, you handle that thing with care. And with love. You even say, so is it because of the, don't worry, I'll take care of it. Come, you carry the child unto yourself. Is it not true? Yes, that's why truth pays. So you discover many of us and many Christians, they, 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 feel, they feel that they are doing somebody good for what they are going to enjoy. No, it's, so, it's yourself. If you obey God and give, it's yourself. You enjoy the benefit of giving. It's not, what you gave is nothing compared to, I mean, what you're going to receive later. When you pay your tithe, for example, when, when you decide to give your first fruit and all that, your first salary of the month and whatever, the fruit you got, and you release it to God. You see, you are giving it because of the benefit that will come within a year. And you reap out of it. It's your benefit. So, number two, claim the word. Tell somebody, claim the word. Claim the word. <laughs> Many of us, we know how to claim things, but we don't know how to claim the word. The word is written because of me. Hallelujah. The Bible is written because of who? Because of me. It's not because of you. It's because of me and the story of Bible. So take the word as a personal letter to you, not to us. A job given to us, nobody cares to do it. If I say, everyone of you sitting here, please, um, let us carry those things and do that. Some of you, we do it. Some of you will be looking from one distance. Am I right? Some of you will leave. Some people will be doing some because it's a job given to everybody. Nobody takes it serious. But if I say, Mr. Man, go and do this one, you will do it darling. Hallelujah. Now that's why, you see, the word of God, take it as your own personal letter to you. Claim it. Claim it like that. Don't give any interpretation. Claim it as it. Number three, act on the word. Act on the word. How do you act on the word? How do you act on the word? How to act? 
Do this. Do things you generally will not do. Do things you will generally will not do. That is how to act on the world. You see, look at a man like Peter. He decided to jump on the river, on the water and start walking. He won't do that generally. He never allowed his brain and his, to think before he did that. It was when he started using his brain to think. Ha! He said, what am I doing? He started thinking. Don't use your brain to interpret God's word. Use your heart. Because your, your brain can only be developed by physical, around, physical thing around. But your mind can only be developed by the word of God. Your heart is what God is talking about. The brain is carnal. The brain is carnal. But your heart or your mind, your inner mind is spiritual. That is where the spirit of God breaks on. So when you start calculating things, one plus one, you miss it. So act. Do things you generally will not do. For example, generally you won't want to pay your full tithe. Do it. That's acting on the word. Generally you wouldn't want to give first fruit. Do it. That's acting on the word. Generally you wouldn't want to talk to some people. Talk to the people about Christ. You feel shy to preach in the bus. You feel shy to preach to your neighbor. Generally you wouldn't like to do it. Do it. That's how to act on the word. Commit yourself wholly to this thing. That's also how to act on the word. Move by faith as if you have already have it. Move by faith as if you already what? Have it. You're looking for a job, say yes. When you're going out in the morning, dress as if you're going to work. Somebody asks you, where are you going? I'm going to work. Where are you working? Over there. But that's not your business. You dress out as if you're going to work. You know, you go to your place. You see, the way you package yourself, that is the way they will value you. You go to your place or work your business. In fact, if I, if you, if I come to your shop, the way you dress, it will make me to know the kind of stuff you sell. Then I will know the price to pay for what you sell. That is it. So, when you go out, package yourself. Look the way you want people to look at you. Move by faith as if you already have it already. I told you, dance the way you will dance if you have gotten the miracle. Don't wait, oh God, if I get this miracle, I will how we dance. No, dance it now. Don't wait. If God bless me, then I will give this. No, give it now. No, I I I, I don't have to give to God. Oh, that's why you can always get. Give now, then you'll see what will happen. Announce and declare your dreams. Announce. Uh, these points are really important ones. A lot of people tell me, you know, they, 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 a lot of people tell me that, uh, they, they say, Pastor, if you, if you say what, if you tell your dream, your enemy will hear it. And they will attack you. Because that is your belief, the enemy will attack you. Me, I will tell my dream, my expectation, and the enemy will not attack me. So I announce it. He said, you know, uh, 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 the enemy, uh, David said about his dream out. And his brother hated him. If they had not hated him, if they have not cast him inside a pit, how will he become who he is today? Dreams cannot be destroyed. If you, if you are opposing it, you are helping the dream to become real. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, declare it publicly. Say it. Don't hold it. Do you know, some, when you say such things, some people will be angry with you. It's being proud. Let them tell you. It's good. Hey, he thinks he's the one that knows the word of God. What's your business? If you get angry, say your own. I know that. Now, you see, declare it. Announce it. Let them hate you. Keep saying it and keep declaring it. Keep, keep saying what you believe in the Lord. And you know, it works. The word is working for me. Tell somebody the word of God is working for me. Acts chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. Acts chapter 3, from verse 4 to 5. This is all about Peter. 
We've read this place so many times, but I feel we should look at it, reading the Word of God. Do you, do you know one thing I believe about the Word of God? Each time I read the Word of God, I, I, I live from glory, I shine from glory to glory. Don't just read the Bible as if you are reading more religious stuff. No. It won't do you any good. Read the Word of God, and as you read it, focus your eyes on the Word of God. Even if you are reading it from a media, from a tape, from whatever, a cassette, or from your iPad, iPhone, whatever, be, li, lo, look at it from the Bible. Because as soon as, the more you look at the Word of God, your eyes will begin to shine. Your big eyes will get brighter. I mean, not, I mean, I mean, even when the devil sees your eye, they will see the shining of your eyes. They will run away. Now, I read Acts chapter 3 from verse 4. The Bible says, And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. You see, he gave heed. Do you know, when I tell you to look at me sometime, what I wanted to do, what I, why I'm saying that is because I want you to put your mind that you are expecting something from us. How I, I'm trying to activate your expectation so that you can really push your expectation high and get something. Are you looking at me now? Uh, look at me now. Aren't you expecting something? Anytime you look at somebody, you are expecting something. Anytime you look at somebody. And that's why one of the techniques and of interview, and some, I'm sure many of you know about this, when you go inter to interview, uh, whether embassy or any interview, don't look anywhere. Don't look at the table. Don't look at the ground. Don't bend your head down. Look straight at the man who is interviewing you. How many of you know that principle before? It's a principle everywhere. When you go for an embassy, when you go for any, inter any interview, don't look down, don't look anywhere. Look straight at the eyes of the man who is interviewing. In the Western world, if you don't look at them in the, in, when you are under security interview, they will say you are lying. Some of you security men, they say you are, you are trying to shy away from the truth. So when you look straight at them, while you are answering their question, that security, police, whatever, they, they just feel that you are saying the truth. Now, see, so, so looking as if you were expecting something, now you see, the Bible says they, they fasten their eyes on him. Apart from that, the man looked at Peter and expected to receive something. And he got what he was expecting. You will get what you are expecting. Look at someone say, neighbor, I'm expecting something big this year. And I will get what I'm expecting. If you believe you will get it, shout a big hallelujah. I'm getting my own already. I've actually got in my own already. I'm seeing it clearly in my mind's eyes. Hallelujah. I'm going to celebrate with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 18. Proverbs 23, verse 18. The word of God is sharper, is quick, is powerful, it energizes. Now, sometimes when I read the Bible, and I can't imagine how. Uh, someone who has been dead for four days. Can't be somebody dead for four days. Please don't call me to pray for someone who has been dead for four days. If you call me to pray for such person, I almost run away. Now, imagine Jesus going to pray for someone who has been dead for four days. Man of God, if you are the one, how would you look like? Four days means the body is rotting, the eyes is the person is smelling, stinking, and going to pray. Ha, yeah, yeah. It is only Jesus that can do such thing. Hallelujah. If, I, if you tell me to pray for such kid, I will go there say, I, say, I will go there to fulfill righteousness so that they will not say the pastor is running. I will just say, Jesus, come and heal the person. I say, Jesus is the healer. It's not me. Jesus, heal the person. If he heals it, it becomes God's glory, not me. Because I know I can't do it by my strength. It's not by my power. It's not by my mind. But by the Spirit of God, says the Lord. Am I right? So put your confidence in anything you want to do. Put it on God. Now look at it in Proverbs 23 verse 18. For surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Can you shout a big amen? amen. Say my expectation. my expectation. Say it again. My expectation. My expectation. Shall, never shall never be cut off. Now, the question I want to ask you. What are you expecting this year? 
What are you expecting this year? Oh, pastor, I need, a, I need, I need admission. I want to go to school. I need scholarship. I need uh, to get a job in a bank. I need a job, job in an oil company. Oh, that's a big expectation. The Bible says, if you trust God, if you obey, your expectation will surely come to pass. Hallelujah. Your expectation will come to pass. You see, you are not born to suffer. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are not born to suffer. Do you think you are born to suffer? No, God never made you to suffer. It will be an error for you to think that you are born to suffer. Even if you came from a village, even if you came from a mother, a father who never went to school in life, or if you came from a father that never enjoyed life, you, so long you know Jesus, it was not by mistake. You are not born to suffer. Do you observe that many of you here, the day you came to this church, maybe you watch, on, you watch us on television, with a company with your friend, only you came here. And you discover that many of you have opportunity to give, many of you among your friends had the opportunity to serve God, to be born again. But they are not born again. Do you know why? It's because they were not elected by God. Yet, their own election will come in future when their eyes will be open. But for the fact that you decided to come to church, you decided to come among others in your family. You, maybe you, you are the only person. Or maybe among the group of you, some of you are the only person. Means that you are the only one. Or um, God has ordained never to suffer in life. Never to be rejected in life. And that is why your eyes open to see the truth. And you are here. It is not a, mis a mistake. It was divinely orchestrated by God. He set you up to be here. He set you up to know the Lord. He set you up to be born again. Hallelujah. And that is why you, you, you are not a product of an error, mistake, or you're not, you're not born to suffer. You are not made to suffer. You are not supposed to suffer. And you cannot. It's not going to work out. It's because you are made to enjoy life. Say, I am made, I am made. to enjoy life. And hear me, people of God. Some situations have happened to you in the past. That when you look at the situation, you may want to cry. You may feel like crying. Because those things that happened to you in the past are so painful. But you don't know. When painful things happen to a man in the past, God is setting up something that will make him get a better blessing at the later end. All things work for a believer for good. All things, all things. You, you lost your loved one and he died. So why, why did he die and you are alive? You wonder. And you are alive. The reason because you are alive because God is thinking good things about you. Hallelujah. You lost something that is dear to you. Maybe money or whatever, or objects or whatever, whatever. Or money or, car, or whatever. Why did you lose that thing? No. Don't look at it as if every word is turning against you. No. Just look at it as God wants to take me to another new level in life. All things work it for good to those who believe in Him. I am not at disadvantage in anything. I'm always at advantage. Say that to yourself. I'm always at advantage. Yes. You are always at advantage. And that is why you see, don't look down on yourself depressed and frustrated. No. Ah, no. Frustration and depression shouldn't be. Even when contrary things are happening, don't depress yourself. Don't be frustrated. You are more than able. You are more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. You are bigger than that thing that is troubling you. You are far bigger. For that thing to let you down, to steal your joy is too small. I'm better than that. Say, I'm better than that. <laughs> Nothing will disturb me some other day. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, so, expect, number one, expect to have a husband. Expect to have a wife. Expect to have children. 
as a young man, I expect it. Don't live I don't care life. And I say a lot of young boys who are not even thinking to get married. Why shouldn't you think to get married? I was talking to my daughter today, yesterday. Oh, so she don't like. She, but let me say, I was talking to my daughter. I mean, just a young girl, secondary school. I say, I started praying for the wife I'm going to get married when I was in secondary school. You should start praying for your own now. So I ask her, I say, which kind of husband you want to marry? You want to marry? And she said, oh, daddy, I want to marry a husband like you. I say, you mean it? You say, yes. Oh, you get your expectation. You get your dream. Begin to pray. Pray it. I started praying. You see, look, look, don't wait until when you need a dying thing, you start praying for it. No. I pray for things I hate. I confess things I hate. So that by the time I needed it, it will come like that. Yeah. I, want, I started praying for marriage. Who I'm going to get married to? When I was in secondary school, asking God, Lord, I'm going to marry to a good woman. I'm going to have the best. I'm going to have, enjoy my life. A peaceful home. A loving home. A woman that will love me. That's why Helen loves me so much. Hallelujah. She loves me more than as I love her anyway. Because she does a lot of good, good things to me. And I've not been able to do plenty of those good things to her like she's doing to me. Hallelujah. She does so many plenty plenty things to me. Good things. Huh? Uh, Is that so? You see? It's true? Yeah. She agrees. He agrees. No man can pay the, their wives all what they are doing to him. You can't pay your wife. Can you? No, you can't pay your wife. She loves more than you. To raise the children is not easy. To carry preg- Go and carry pregnancy for one, for one month and see how it will look like. Can you pay? She, and she will do it out of love. Even with the pregnancy, she's cooking for you. Haba, the love. Don't mind me. I will try my best to do more. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. And those of you young boy and young girl, expect to get married and pray towards it. Number two, expect to enjoy your life and have plenty of money. No money, but plenty of money. Expect it. Too much money, my brother. I told them when you were not around, I said, we are money magnet. We are money what? Magnet. Say, I'm a money magnet. So, expect to enjoy your life. I am going to enjoy my life. I'm enjoying my life already. I'm still going to enjoy my life. This year, you will enjoy your life. You will enjoy your children. You will enjoy your wife. You will enjoy your husband. Your house, you will enjoy your house. I, I pity some men. Oh my God. Huh. I pity some men. I, when I see some men, I almost feel like crying. Can you imagine a man will pay for his own house? He will pay two bedroom flat, maybe 200,000 naira for a year. The man will go to work as early as 7 o'clock in the morning. When he finished from work, he will go to Mama, uh, this where they used to drink uh, joint. They will go to club joint and stay there till 11 o'clock. Then we drive from 11 o'clock, drive to the house, eat, pa, 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 and sleep again. 7 o'clock, he's out of the house and he paid 200,000 and he's not enjoying the house. for house rent, bought furnitures, expensive furnitures, TV is there, buy rug, rub the house, do everything fine, put maybe fan or air conditioner in the house, but yet he will leave out 7 o'clock, 
He will close from work five o'clock. From five o'clock, he will drive to to see friends from club. From club, eleven o'clock, he's somewhere drinking pepper soup and talking with friends. And come to the house eleven o'clock. After eleven o'clock, pa, you pull this on, just fall on the bed and sleep. Early in the morning, it's five o'clock. Wake up six o'clock, seven o'clock, he's off to work again. When will he have time to enjoy his house? It's an error. Ignorant people. If I were you, I would, when I close from office, straight to my house. Go enjoy my sit down and qu- crazy shit I use my money to buy. Watch the television I use my money to buy. Relax and enjoy the fun and see and enjoy the comfort of the home. Hallelujah. That's the thing that's about life. So I will enjoy my life. Hallelujah. The other time I were driving down, I had my driver, my new driver with me. We we're driving just yesterday. You know my latest driver? My driver is Pastor Helen Odogba. <laughs> I employed her yesterday. I, I hope she's not going to sack herself again. <laughs> Hallelujah. So she was driving me to the town, and as we we're going on the road, and she said, she said, Oh, she enjoyed driving. She just enjoyed driving. So I not told her, I said, So you enjoy driving? Say yes. He said, she said this word. No wonder that time we employ a driver for you, you, you were fighting it. You like to drive. I still don't like to enjoy life. So you mean, by force, they wanted to put me to be papa, to sit on the back, and they would be driving papa at the back. I, I don't. <laughs> How will you carry such, such kind of fine car? And somebody will put you in the back. The, 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 the driver will enjoy the air condition and send the small one to you. <laughs> <laughs> she said, No wonder I like to drive and enjoy life. Look at someone say, I will enjoy my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And expect to have plenty of money. Expect it. Just see it. See it done. See the money in your hand. Hallelujah. See it in your pocket. Begin to visualize your bank account. Real. Changing, smiling. Visualize you coming to the bank and the bank, they will call you to come and see manager. Is it everybody they will call to come and see manager? Some of you enter bank, you will queue up. You stand. Where should pay you? Sit down. You come and queue up again. There are some people when they enter the bank, they will say, come, come. No. They will not queue up. They take themselves in a, in a different room. Sit down. They will go and bring the money and give him in, his, in the office and he walk like this and go outside. That is a rem. Re- re- receive that rem in Jesus' name. Say, I'm a money magnet. Number three, expect to live happy and healthy. Expect to live happy and what? Healthy. You see, sickness is a devourer. Sickness what? It's what? It's a devourer. These days I see, I hear about some people who just die just like that. Just die. Death is a thief. The spirit of death is a thief, it's a robber. He robs people, you know, of their time, of their energy. That is it. So, always expect, be conscious of health and long life. Do you know, do, do you know I, I, I used to pity a lot of people. They are not conscious of health. They don't go for medical shock. If you are 40, 45 and, and above, always make sure you go for medical check Check your BP. And if your BP is too high, Always take your medications. Always take your medication. If you can. If you can manage it by lifestyle and um, avoiding this, avoiding salt, avoiding that. Okay, that's all fine. But if you cannot, just take your cool and change your lifestyle. Reduce your weight. Because the more you get fatter, the more you attract sickness. Fat attracts sickness. If you don't know it, know it today. Fat attracts what? Sickness. It gives room for sickness to come and breed. Enjoy, enjoy themselves. Hallelujah. So you see, see, expect to live happy and, 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 and healthy. Expect it. Number four, expect everyone to be good and nice to you. Loving you and be nice to you. I expect you to be nice to me. I expect you to love me. Hallelujah. I expect to, you to speak good about me. 
And the more I expect you to love me, you will still keep loving me. I expect Helen to love me. I expect my children to love me. You know, when I came to church this morning, as I came out of my car, you know, my, my, my daughter, Jewel, wanted to come and hug me. I said, no, no, please don't hug me. I said, don't hug me. He said, no, just a, just a, a kiss. I said, okay, if it's a kiss, no problem. So I did like this, huh? Because I don't want her powder to stain my white. So I had to be very careful. And she gave me the kiss. And my heart, I said, mm, I enjoyed it. I said, thank God. I just, as I was going to the office, I said, thank God I have a loving daughter. Thank God she loves me. I was happy for that. I was so happy. If, if it was not because I want, don't want her to stay me, I will hug her like this. And I'll, not she asking me, I'll be done to give her taza, taza, taza everywhere. And she'll be so happy, and I'll be so happy, and I'll go home. Expect everyone to help you, expect, happy with you. Expect even your dog to love you. Expect your security man in the compound to love you. If, you don't, if your security man in your street don't love you, the day you will come late, he will ask you, who are you? <laughs> so expect him to love you. Hallelujah. You know, some of the streets, there are security men everywhere in the street. So, expect everyone to love you. And love everyone. Look at the lady who gave testimony here. The lady who gave testimony. About the bank is stuff. The husband. Both of them were telling me. Say, 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 do you know, Pastor, I love you so much. They, both of them, both of them said, they love me so much. To the extent that every week they have dream. And they will see me in their dream. And I'm sending them tests or praying for them or blessing them. And you can't love me that way and don't give testimony. You know. You, you know. They came here believing God for a child. And they came to my office. Say, Pastor, look at, I need a baby. I touch them, a miracle happened. All because of the kind of love they had for me. They came again because of some other thing again. Like that. Before you know, a miracle happened. I, the next time again, I spoke. I, I, I keep saying. That wasn't the first time I had a vision about her. One of the times, I said, there's a woman at the back there. She's standing this way. She's, 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 and she's believed God. She's already pregnant immediately. And she got pregnant, the second, second baby. And it is out of love. Love magnet. Love speak. They, they, see, if you have love for your pastor, that love will attract me to you to bless you. It's, it's a force of attraction. That love... Because you speak good about me, you talk good about me. They would, and, and, and even when there's you, you even when there is no reason to talk good about me, you just discover you are talking good about me and loving me. You know, somehow you will discover two of us will meet somewhere and I'll begin to bless you. I will bless you. Your, if I do not come even in your dream, you will see me there. That is it. That is the power of love. It will bring expectation. It make it real. Hallelujah. So I expect to enjoy and having a good life. Enjoy your life. Be, people, enjoy, people to, expect people to be nice to you. Expect to have power over evil and over witchcraft. Expect to have power over evil and over witchcraft. Listen to me. As I am here, I'm not afraid of any witch, any wizard. Do they, are they people that have witch? Yes. Are they in the family? Yes. But I don't... I don't I see that as powerless people, defeated, ignorant, useless, and foolish people. That's why I see them. So I see them that I see I'm bigger, bigger than them. All the witchcraft. I all, all, all the witchcraft. Listen to me. Now, for you to know what I'm going to say now. All the witchcraft, all combined together. If there are one billion witchcraft in Kaduna or in Nigeria, one billion. I, can, I consider them to be powerless. If you know this, you will never be afraid of any witch in your family. If, if, even everybody in my family, they are witch. I consider that they are powerless. Like this alone, can drive them. Just like this. Check your body like this. They can drive them. You know, if you drive like, if you check like mosquito, that person, you will just run away. You know, if, if mosquito fly, that person, you, they will, I consider it to be so minute, so powerless that 
Only, only royally like this. <laughs> All the witchcraft run away. Without saying, in the name of Jesus, fire! Without saying those words, they just run away. Because I am more than a conqueror. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The lion of the tribe of Judah. So because a, a lion begot lion, he is a lion. I am also a lion. Hallelujah. So all the other ones are flies and mosquitoes. Witchcraft are flies. They have no power to hurt because they don't have the power. They have no power to hurt. Hallelujah. And so that will make you to be bolder and fearless. And from today, when somebody talks to you and say, look straight at the person's face and talk straight back because he has no power and he cannot hurt you. Say, I cannot be hurt. Nobody can mess up with me because I'm more than them. I'm saying it, it is true. You are more than them. I am more than them. Hallelujah. They can do nothing because there's no power. Number six, expect people to favor you, assist you, and support you. Are you hearing me? Can you hear that? Expect people to what? Assist you, favor you, support you. This world, you must live by the assistance of people. No matter how wealthy you are, even if you are Bill Gates, you are the most wealthy person in the world. You need people to assist you. More, their job money we only will not do. Money will not clean your shoe. Money will not wash your clothes. People will do the cleaning and the washing and the ironing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The money will not put money in your gate. Money will not provide security. People will do it by themselves. So I expect people to, to assist you. If you're sick, no matter how worthy you are, if your security man did not support you, assist you, you are gone. You are gone. So I expect people to assist. People, tell yourself, people are assisting me. People are supporting me. People are favoring me. Hallelujah. That is it. I expect it. Expect to give to God and give to people because you are more than a conqueror. You have more money on ground. Expect to give. I told you before that if you don't give, it then means you are showing lack. The Bible says nobody should come to the house of God empty handed. In the means of lack, yet God said give. In the means of joblessness, he say give. The reason because if you don't give, you are demonstrating that to yourself that you are anointed to be poor. So giving people what they need, helping the widow, helping the people that you know passing pain is a way of making yourself to go up. Why shouldn't we go? Why shouldn't we help people? You as a as a as a man, you go to a barber salon. And the, the person says the public salon is 200 naira. Or 150, sorry, 150. And you give the person 200 naira and you are waiting for change. And after 30 minutes, you are still, you are waiting for change. Okay, wait for change. You are waiting for 15 naira change. Are you and the person who is better? You are better than the public salon. Why don't you give him the 15 naira? Give it! Let me tell you something. I've, I've been to some countries and I go to the barber to barb my hair. I pay equivalent of 5000 naira just for my hair. It was when I did that in a particular country I traveled to. I said, barb my hair. I went to Salud, just a small shop. Barb my hair. And by the time they tell you how many dollars you pay, then you take a calculator and, and press and calculate the equivalent. You see, for this hair, $20. dollars it looks big. Calculate. Have your phone. Calculate twenty dollars, and see what is this. You will shout, "Hey!" And yeah, we pay two hundred and one fifty. We will bargain the bargain the person. How Is it two hundred? If you want fifty, I will pay you one fifty. That is poverty. <laughs> pay the man and go away, so that you can become better. The more you give to assist people who you are, who who need to be assisted, you are pushing yourself up. Hallelujah. The more. If more you give to even rich people, give to rich people so that you can be richer than them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Some of you, all the time you're always expecting to receive from rich people. 
put something in rich people's hands. They have it. They don't need it. You are doing that so that you can use them to climb higher. That's a mystery you need to know. Hallelujah. So, expect to walk in victory and success and health. 365 days. Hallelujah. You will do that in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 8, verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Now, key is to activating your expectation. The key is to activate your expectation. Write it down if you want. One, prayers. Two, fasting, if need be. Three, faithfulness in tithes, first fruit, seed, sow seed, covenant giving, raising an altar. Number four, praise, giving God praises. Number five, com commitment to God. Number six, confessing your dream boldly. In Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Turn with me if you have your Bible. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. Are you there now? Romans 10, verse 8. But what say it? <laughs> that is the scripture. What saith it? I read. What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is. The word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And shall believe in thy heart. That God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth. With the mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. Hebrew chapter 10 verse 23. Hebrew 10 23. You need to get this down. Hebrew 10 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without what? Wavering. Now look at it. Look at it. Some of you have not opened to that place. Just open it. Fast. Press that button. Press that button. Open the Bible if you have one. 10, Hebrew 10 verse 28. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promise. Holding fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Without wavering. Without wavering. Holding it fast. You have got the word of God. Hold that thing fast. The Bible says, hold what you believe fast so that nobody will steal it away. Say, hold it fast. Hold God's word fast. This year, hold God's word fast. Because you will receive everything you expect this year. You will receive it. Say, I will receive it. Say, I will receive it. Stand up and say, I receive now. I can't hear you. Say, I receive now. Say it again. I receive now. Open your mind and begin to pray right now. Open your mind and begin to pray. Open your mind and begin to pray. I receive now. Is the word of God for you? I receive it. I receive it. I receive it. I receive now. I receive now. Advocate for the young and more than a conqueror. I'm a child of covenant. It's my time to laugh. Cause I have conquered it all. Impossible is nothing. Impossible is nothing. I am a champion. I am a 